You're watching the BBC. Oh, Scotland have just qualified for the Euros! I just remember growing up as a kid, it was always on on Hogmanay and it would have everybody in fits, young, old, Everybody just absolutely loved it. Very proud, very, very <laughs> proud of us. Since that programme in 1993, I think in every year since, it's been part of the national conversation. Shocker, Rooney, you know? <laughs> Brilliant, you're right. <laughs> yeah. This is it. The big one. It's a tradition. There was always something that made everybody stop and laugh. <laughs> I mean, Hogmanay is only an excuse. Yeah, for sure. He's got me. He's got me. Oh, it was me! Yeah! There was nothing else like it. There wasn't folk passing around jokes about the fat bone or the mobile phones, because there wasn't such a thing as a mobile phone. A man of vision! <laughs> it reminded me very much of a kind of New Year in Hogmanay party. <laughs> you can he beat it! Right from the get-go, people were watching it that weren't that passionate about football, because it was just funny. Maybe he's aye, maybe he's no. If I should fall, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a football field that is forever Scotland. <laughs> a red ash whom Scotland bore, shaped, made aware of the sting of a mold master against a thigh, <laughs> of the embarrassment of having your mammy watch you, of growing into your team role, of growing into your team strip of your gravel rash knees sticking to the bed sheets. <laughs> Years pass. Boot colours become more gallus. Pitches ever more plasticky. <laughs> Yet our aim remains the same. Youngsters dragged from tablet and computer to hack and bluter. <laughs> Daring to dream that bold wee Scotia might yet triumph at a big major final. <laughs> it's only a game, or is it only an excuse? Time for some in-depth analysis. And let me assure viewers, everything is filmed in keeping with the latest pandemic distancing restrictions. Chick Young, do you think the home team did enough to answer their critics? No. <laughs> Thank you, Chick, for that insight. Right, goal of the season competition, send us a postcard with the name of your favourite Rangers goal on it. <laughs> and you'll probably win it. The Jim White impression is my favourite. Hi, Jim White here, and welcome to Scott Sport Extra Wine. When Johnny comes for the broadcasters, that's when I sit back with my, my glass of fizz and enjoy it. <laughs> right, later on, we'll have the highlights of that crucial Breek and Montrose class. So if you don't want to know the score, look away now. <laughs> right, you can look back now. Well, Jerry, what'd you make of that? 2 0 to Montrose. <laughs> well, the great result for the Gable Endies. Glebe Park is never an easy place to get a result, but uh, they certainly got one tonight. Quite. Uh, do you think Montrose can build on this and maybe go all the way to the middle of uh, whatever league they're in? Couldn't give a toss. <laughs> oh, no. Very warm welcome to my Thanks, Diggy. Well, to continue our in-depth coverage of Scottish football, here's a quick round-up of Division 1 and Division 2, and that gives us much more time for this. <laughs> you just can't keep them out of the news, can you, Chip? <laughs> totally no. And I'll tell you something else, Dougie. You just can't keep them out of the news. <laughs> Thanks, Chick. Well, coming up, we look at the main contenders for our sports personality of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just can't keep them out of the news. I think the people who weren't in it would say, oh, I'm glad I'm not in that while secretly cursing the fact that they weren't. <laughs> I think it became a compliment. Right, now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. 
What's coming in on the email, Spency? Well, yes, Dugre, the emails are absolutely flying in. Here's just some of the names who have emailed the show today. Lydia Teapot, Hugh Gels, and finally, Ivor Daphne, who says, when are you numpties going to get wise to this? While football fans might know who these characters are, not everybody in Scotland did, and therefore it was through their transmission through only an excuse that they became household names or household characters. So, Spency, is that a new computer you've been getting? Uh, no, Doogie. Uh, unfortunately, somebody nicked my computer. Uh, this is actually a, a George Foreman Lean Mean Fat Reducing Grilling Machine, uh, but uh, it looks a bit like a computer. Great stuff. Kilmarnock versus Falkirk. <laughs> David versus David. Scotland has always had these kind of working class intellectuals. Falkirk's streets were deserted. The locals crammed into pubs and crowded round tellies with carryouts. In many ways, just another Saturday. <laughs> it used a language that at times felt kind of overblown, slightly pompous. Football is, was, and ever should have been the ballet of the working classes, the poetry of the full faced the concerto of the criminally insane. And I absolutely love the McIlvany one with the kind of the beatification of, you know, the wise man at the bar. Back in the old days, they used to say if you, if you dropped a stone down a Lanarkshire coal mine, you'd you'd hit a decent footballer and probably kill him. <laughs> that observation is just so accurate. I love it. Well, Davey, this game is definitely swinging Rangers way. What a great goal for Celtic. Yes, Archie. Uh, hello, Archie. Well, Archie, uh, to be perfectly honest, Archie, it was a tremendous goal, but... Uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Davey. Uh, what were you saying? I said Archie, uh, <laughs> Archie's my favourite commentator. Archie's like, you know, my, my favourite football commentator. Because of that, I was desperate to see how he was portrayed <laughs> in Only an Excuse. It was just brilliant, absolutely sweet as a nut. So who will it be, Celtic or Juventus? And penalty! Well, that seemed harsh, Archie. I can only presume the ref saw something that we didn't. Well, uh, speak for yourself, uh, Billy Stark. Uh, that was clearly, definitely, unequivocally a penalty. Uh, whatever it was for. Uh, and steps up and whoop! Justice is done! What's a Juve? She may be an old lady, but she's made an old man very happy tonight! Oh! It's exaggerated, but it's accurate in a way. Tonight, three middle-aged men wearing clothes far too tight for them <laughs> will try to cross their legs. Here's all men in tight clothes trying to cross their legs. <laughs> and fail. It is funny because it just points out things that a viewer might not notice and then, you know, after watching Only an Excuse, it makes you look at people in a completely different light. For me, James, the proof is in the pudding. It could be a black pudding, a white pudding, a mealy pudding, or my personal favourite, a big chocolate gatox with fudgy bits. <laughs> Alas, but I fear what pudding will be one of the frozen ones out the freezer shop that you can taste the box after. There are so many cliches. Uh, there has been a few times that something will come out of my mouth and I'll watch it back and then go, oh, gosh, that's a, that is a cliche. Not as, not as much as Charlie Nicholas, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've let a few out. <laughs> Scotland have to be careful and get this right. Let the boss be the leader because too many cooks spoil the broth. There's no smoke without fire. No noodles without soya sauce. <laughs> a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. <laughs> Don't sign until you've seen Love and Design. <laughs> oh, body form, body form for you. If you were to ask Ken Douglas what Ken Douglas thinks, Ken Douglas might think, then Ken Douglas would have to say, you'd be better asking Ken Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think everybody, uh, myself included, took it in. Good nature. Oh, well, it was just fun. Mm -hmm. If you can't laugh at yourself, you've got a problem, haven't you? Maybe he's aye, maybe he's not. It's good to mumble. <laughs>
Kenny, my idol, was Kenny, so maybe he's I, maybe he's not. It was brilliant. It was, they had them down to a tee. If people don't know what I do, it's because you're not telling them. There's a point in telling you if you're not telling them. Oh, I, I tell you, but it did cross my mind at times not to give him any more ammunition. I've done two interviews. I'm sick fed up telling you. If you're not telling, I'm not telling. Well, here's the thing, I, you know, I don't mind talking on television, but I get really nervous when I have to act. I'm delighted to say I am joined now by the eponymous hero himself, Kenny the Man. You must be thrilled to be the subject of Kenny the Movie. Maybe it's... The moment Johnny comes out dressed like that, I'm in stitches. So I was terrified um, because I was holding back Hilarious la laughter for the entire thing. And so, Ken Douglas ended up in a documentary called Kenny. <laughs> so it's a biopic. It's got nothing to do with washing machines. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that Bolongoli had, had gone to Spain, but I was suspicious when, on the bus to Kilmarnock, he gave me this as a present. <laughs> I think it's every club in Scotland is taking their coronavirus precautions very seriously. I mean, you know, I just look how much Celtic have socially distanced themselves from us at the top of the table. Champions. Uh, Celtic Football Club. Jonathan managed to capture something in Tommy Burns that even, uh, the story goes, even Tommy Burns recognised in himself. One word answer. Celtic Football Club. Is one word. <laughs> My husband that came here from Finland, he sort of got on the bandwagon right away, and of course some of his teammates were featured in it. Big Lorenzo was a character. Yeah, I'm a Rosso. I'm a Jody. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's manager, Dick Advocat. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? Hmm? In five years at Rangers, I saw a lot of things. Hundreds of matches, thousands of incidents. In fact, the only thing I never saw was the away team getting a penalty at Ibrox. It went down really well, and I, I know a lot of the Rangers players watch it. I mean, that's their gaffer, that's the boss, you know, the head honcho, and, and there he was on telly last night having the piss taken out of him. <laughs> I tell you, it's funny, because it's true. Can I just say something here? I love the Graham Sooners one, no. Well, the moustache. <laughs> it's just a particular type of man. They don't really exist anymore, and um, I think that's brilliant. If I can just say something here. Yeah. The very first time, the first thoughts, you're angry, because he's, he was so good at getting me, I thought, um, and that sound that ridiculous. I might be interested in the Scotland manager's job, but it's a tough one. No one's going to come in with a magic wand and suddenly make things right. Not now, Sooty. Not now. <laughs> then you do see the funny side of it, and then you, you got to admire his talent. I mean, he was sensational. I think it was a bit of an honour to get on his show and be mimicked. I loved Brendan Rogers. Absolutely loved Brendan Rogers. <laughs> Here, Brendan and his band, Tone Wolf and the Charlie Boys. I nearly threw a wobbler over John McGinn. to mine on the sunbed. <laughs> Featuring Brendan's own special tribute to former Celtic favourite, Moussa Dembele. Moussa, Moussa, get to f***, get to, get to. Moussa, Moussa, get to f***, get to. The Brendan O'Rogers collection, available now. In Liverpool, they say, you'll never walk alone. That isn't a motto, it's advice. <laughs> well, I, I'm asked this often. Uh, why doesn't Andy Robertson play as good for Scotland as for 
It's for Liverpool, OK, look, it's, it's not for me to say, but uh, can you imagine for a player how it is to feel to, you know, to spend halfway line, to be two, two, maybe three players get to buy and look up for strikers to cross ball to, and for that striker is Ollie McBurney. I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking, I think. But for me, it's fine, fine, yeah. I think football is, well, it's just in Scotland's DNA, but more than that, we seem to have produced amazing array of managers with an astonishing array of personalities. What I love about it is that, you know, somebody loves them somewhere. <laughs> All right, well, at, at the end of the <laughs> day, the <laughs> BBC done a <laughs> documentary about party <laughs> thistle. I wasn't meant to avoid that swearing, but by I covered up the beat machine with my first <laughs> team talk. Still, at least I got a job over it. I got offered a star and role in a movie for some <laughs> called Quentin <laughs> Tarantino. But someone's always giving them a kicking. And I love the fact that there was a kind of mixture of that. <laughs> my name's Tommy Craig. <laughs> Would you like to sign for Aberdeen? <laughs> and now, will you please welcome, dancing the cha-cha, the very lovely Miss Gina Lamar and Mr. Chick Young. <laughs> Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. I'll tell you a story about that, actually. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever laughed like that, but I was asked to do an advert for commercial radio, which was me impersonating Jonathan, impersonating me, if you're still following me. <laughs> and it was a simple 30-second script, which started with me saying, <laughs> this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. <laughs> And the guy who was producing it said, no, I'll do that again. I said, what was wrong with it? I said, that was going to be a one-take wonder. He said, do it again. I said, what's wrong with it? He said, you haven't got the laugh right. <laughs> I said, it's my laugh, actually. And Watson, at that stage, was making more money out of being me than I'm making out of being me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't laugh like that. Chick Young, when he was first lampooned on Only an Excuse, it was just... It was just absolutely brilliant, this perception of him being a blue nose when he is, of course, a die-hard St Mirren fan, as everybody knows. St Mirren? What about them? <laughs> they won it in 1987. Did they? Oh, I, I mean, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, St Mirren, uh, my beloved buddies, what a great night that was. Yes, we were dancing in the streets of Mirren. The curse for me about the Rangers thing was that I'd written a book about Rangers. And of course, there was a natural assumption that I was a Rangers fan, when in fact I'm just a mercenary bastard. I got a few quid for writing a book. He is not really a St Mirren fan, is he? He's really got to be a Rangers fan. And it gave Chick um, an extra kind of part to his identity. So it wasn't just the cheery, cheeky chappy, it was the big smile hid a secret. And the secret was he was a teddy bear. <laughs> I look at sports now, and in football, Rangers won the first Old Firm clash of the season at Ibrox by four goals to two. Rangers scored first through John Atten and Wilson, but two goals by Celtic's Aya Berkovic for the start of the lead, and looked as though they would hold on to it till half time. But a Paul Lambert tackle on Jorg Alberts gave away a penalty, which Alberts himself converted. In the second half, Rangers went on to dominate the match, and two further goals by Amaruso and Amato secured the points. Well, that's the sport. Time for us to have a look at the weather prospects now. I could have that story about how a sports at Mern, written in tattoos across my head and go to people, and they would still go, <laughs> the glorious Glasgow Rangers. This has got nothing to do with COVID-19, by the way. This is what I always wear when I'm working at Celtic Park. <laughs> I mean, he, he 
was unique. You know, well, he was, you know, he was like, he was like Eusebio, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, I mean, yeah, he, you're laughing, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> he was a one-off, except, you know, there was two of them, you know, and... Um... So Dennis Law is probably my favourite because he was, I mean, still the only Scottish player to ever be European Player of the Year, iconic, and people who never saw him play, I never know how good Dennis was. I was Italy's top scorer that season with two goals, you know? <laughs> I might have scored three, but for the marking system uh, they had over there called uh, the Catenaccio system. Uh, Catenaccio, now, uh, that's Italian, you know? It, uh, it means Catenaccio, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, even, even the lawman found that one, you know, just a wee bit difficult, you know? <laughs> Dennis Law, I know Dennis very well, so I thought that was brilliant. All those players, I mean, they were, they were, they were so lucky to play with me, you know. Uh, Jim Johnson, Jimmy Baxter, Jimmy Cranky, Jimmy Somerville, and Jimmy Shan, and Jimmy Hendrix, you know, and Jimmy Stewart. Oh, it's a wonderful life, you know, it really is. And Jimmy, Jimmy Craig Cohn, and I don't care, and Jimmy Kerrigan, you know, and, and, you're doing red, you're doing red, you know. Uh, look at me, man, eh? I'm chopping the world, chopping the world, eh? Yeah. I just say, you know, I mean, I, you know, really, I, I've seen some great players in my time. I mean, Alan Ruff, you know, Ted McDougall, and uh, Trevor Cherry, you know. I'm sure they've seen some great players too, you know. But, uh, nonetheless, you know, if pushed, you know, you're going to you know, push me in this one. Uh, I'd say the best of them all. What's me? <laughs> Scottish football. What a game, eh? Party Thistle beat Albion Rovers 11 1. What an embarrassment. Losing a goal to Albion Rovers. <laughs> I know literally nothing about football. Literally nothing, right? Even knowing nothing about football, it's utterly hilarious. About to bring on uh, Kevin Gallagher there, who some feel is a little bit injury prone. Well, uh, judge for yourself. Ravenelli! <laughs> <laughs> and the big Juve striker celebrates in his usual way. I think you should always be allowed to have a wee laugh and a joke as long as it's nothing kind of nasty and that. You know, it is only fit by after all. Welcome to the draw for the first pre-preliminary round of the Scottish Cup, where thanks to the magic of this competition, so many of our Diddy teams dream of making it all the way to Hamden. Of course, they have no chance. Making the draw tonight will be Scott Crabb, player manager of Krakatoa Feridin, and <laughs> Kellyanne McWilliams, the chairwoman of Death Star United. Number two, Dry Boca Juniors. <laughs> Number 20. Versus Biden Munches. <laughs> 27. Internationale Erdrossen. 358. Versus AC Erdrossen. Tasty. Number five. Civil Service Godzillas. <laughs> Number 89. Versus Bunt Island King Kongs. <laughs> and that concludes the draw. Hold me back. Today, Ross County were playing in their first ever Scottish Cup final. Let's see how deserted Dingwall High Street was at 3 p.m. this afternoon. <laughs> and here's what it normally looks like. Only an excuse it was your way of being able to say, you know what, this is football. We can laugh at this. So just looking ahead to Scotland's next fixtures, uh, first up, Scotland play Israel in the Nations League. Then, in the European Championship qualifiers, Scotland travel to play Israel. After that, in the World Cup qualifiers, Scotland are back at Hamden to, to play Israel. <laughs> Followed by the Euro playoff against Israel, then it's the, the home internationals, where Stevie Clark's side are up against Israel. <laughs> then there's a friendly away to, to Israel, a, a Kirton Cup tie at home to, to Israel, and a challenge match away to Israel, and then a home fixture against Israel. And we've just heard Scotland's next qualification group. Group I contains Scotland, Israel, 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 and, and Israel. The humour in the dressing room was very close to what 
um, Jonathan did, and only in each case. At the uh, Italia 90, I scored the goal that put Brazil uh, out of the World Cup. Uh, Maradona gave me a kiss, uh, Pele, he shook me by the hand, and I thought, you know, maybe, you know, one day I'll get to play at, uh, at Dundee with Steven Tweed. <laughs> I couldn't understand, like, you know, uh, why all the Celtic players' kids were called Wayne. Um, you know, like, they bring you into the players' lounge and they go, this is, these are me Waynes, like, you know. <laughs> and even the girls, you know, it's called Wayne. And uh, they say to me, have you got any Waynes yourself? Like, you know, I say, no, I've got two kids that are called Christine and Andrew. So I've got a bit of imagination, you know. There's been an even-handedness to it over the years, there definitely has been, and that's obviously very, very important because we have in Scotland a unique set of kind of finely balanced circumstances when it comes to football, and uh, certainly in the west of Scotland, uh, matters that aren't just about football that are connected, you know, somehow to the football. <laughs> One of the things I really love is how it, it, it really uh, makes a mockery of the importance that football has in Scottish male life. And that's my son, James Simpson, Craig Gemmell, Robert McNeil, Clark, Johnson, Wallace, Chalmers, Old, Lennox, Substitute, Fallon, Lourdes. I was going to add Estro after the stadium like but. In the end, I just thought it was a bit stupid. <laughs> yes, I'm more a Rangers fan. I'm sure a consequence of this. He's very proud of me to own this League Cup winner's medal. John Gregg gave me that. You see this? John Brown gave me that. You see this? Duncan Ferguson gave me that. Ten in a row. Never bothered me, nope. Couldn't give a toss. Couldn't care less. Couldn't give a monkey. <laughs> no! Before Only Excuse came along, it would have been a lot of kind of uh, the Suki Suki stuff with Celtic and Rangers, and as if nobody was able to make a wee joke or have a wee crack at them or anything, and then bang, along came all an excuse. The statement reads as follows. Go away. <laughs> Mind your own business. Give a break. It's no our fault. We're just custodians. Give us money. <laughs> Thank you. It's not just about laughing at your kind of adversary, it allows you to laugh at the thing that you kind of love. So, gentlemen, it's time once again to select the new chairman of Rangers. Are you ready? rip out of both sets of the old firm and it's it's really unique in that both sets of old firm fans love and adore this program. Hudson Edward. Hello Sheik. So Hudson uh, Mon Amigo, surely you can do better than than play for this mob. But I like playing for Celtic. Celtic a massive club, biggest club in Scotland. Aye aye aye. <laughs> but come on he grips French Eddie. It must be ringing around your brain. Sacre bleu! I must move. I will move. Surely, surely that must put you off. Come on, fingers crossed. I block out all transfer talk. Have you got an agent? Do you want one? Do you need a lift to the airport? No, oh, merci. I have the match to play for Satik. OK. Fair dues, begging. That was one away striker, Odson Edward. Celtic player. Aye, for now. <laughs> to go and it's still nothing each year at Ibrox in this pulsating old firm clash. Hedman has the ball, he passes it to Baldy. 
Baldwin slips it to Lambert, Lambert forward to Larson, Larson to a goal and they close to beat him. Kloss saves the shot, Kloss gives it to Moore. <laughs> Celtic and Rangers were kind of sharing the honours and all that and one would have a good year, the other one would be better the next year, so on and so forth. So it was good to try and bring them down a wee peg or two. Moore clears, the clearance goes to Moles, Moles is through, Moles goes round him, but Moles must score the ball down the ground, and Larson scores for Celtic! <laughs> And as the game is being played behind closed doors, it's nice to see the fans represented by cardboard cutouts, with supporters getting a chance to, oh, oh, it looks like there's some trouble. A fight has broken out between rival fans, and yes, yes, here comes the police. The police are here to deal with the situation. Embarrassing scene of football. Aperitif? Nah. I'm happy with the wines I've got. Macaveni. <laughs> he's your best one. Shocker, Rooney, you know? I mean, he's a, a Scottish icon and he's gave the best catchphrase in the world. Those are bugs. <laughs> it was brilliant. I, I, I really did. Um, enjoy it. It was superb. So he knows some of my characteristics or whatever you call it. So he's got it down the way I walk. It was maybe a wee bit too lifelike for me. <laughs> What's the buzz? It's a great catchphrase and it's Johnny and Phil's. It's, it's brilliant. Somebody comes up and says, you know, where's the buzz? And they say, oh, I say, I've not heard that in about two minutes. <laughs> You taking the piss here? <laughs> I think it's a very good, I think it's a very good impersonation. <laughs> because believe it or not, in this modern 21st century Scotland, there are still gentlemen who conduct themselves in this manner. It is, it is beautifully portrayed. <laughs> the only thing I am guilty of is daft boyness. <laughs> Frank McAvaney has been, he's just, he's one of the staples of the whole show, isn't he? So he's, what a character. The thing I remember very clearly about that day was how cold it was. Nice. Sit out in front. When he came out with the white T-shirt on and the white shorts and the sock, the white socks and the wig and the teeth, it was oh, hilarious. Excuse me, why is, uh... Is this the correct locale for the tennising? I bet he must have been freezing. Have you uh, much experience of this game? What, you, you know, growing up in the Milton, we were not blessed with, with tennis courts in the back greens. And back then, it wasn't so much Lendl and Connors as it's mental and Connors, you know? <laughs> I remember very well the final line, which was, I was having a go at him for not being particularly fit, and I had to ask him. Have you ever jumped a net? I don't know. What does she look like? And I had to say that many times because I knew what was coming next. <laughs> I've got a favourite, I know a favourite, I've got, I've got a few. You know, the, my favourite is that I've always said, you know, the two blondes in the garage. <laughs> you know, and going in to pay for the petrol, the guy says, Pump two. No yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, it was great for you. <laughs> I was at the Hilton and uh, I used to go, go there every year and, and people come down and, and they, they must go up the room and watch it. You know, and then they come back down and you're like, oh, say, oh you were brilliant. And it's, you're brilliant, you were brilliant. You know, really. <laughs> And it's, you know, they just don't get it, you know, it's, oh, you were superb in eating the show. I was like, oh, really? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can I ask your opinion on something? Sure, doll. Fire in. I'd like to ask you what you think of the Scottish Parliament's plan of introducing wild beaver to Scotland. 
what Jonathan does is he, it's almost like a bird. He sort of goes like that, like that, like that, like that, and doesn't see anything. <laughs> Beaver. <laughs> you know, and I think that is so funny. And if, I mean, I don't know Frank McAvenny. I mean, there was no, there was no malice to it. Um, I mean, I've always thought that there was no malice to it. So that was, it was, it was good for me. And they kept it fun. kept me in the limelight, which was very much appreciated. Missing going to the pub. Missing that special atmosphere. Missing the wang of stale beer and the stench of pishy lavies. Then check out the new range of fragrances from Stinky Candle, Vomity Toy, Cold Fish Supper, and Pish Stain Flare. So no need to miss it. The smells of a lost summer and the comfort of your own home. The Hogmanay is such a Scottish tradition. Over the old and under the new. And... Okay, team. Now we're going to fix Andy Murray's hip and get him back to playing again. How are his vital signs? <laughs> Let's begin. People are purging the year that's been, and I think only an excuse almost helps to kind of helps us cleanse ourselves of the year that's been. Come on, everyone, support the NHS. You know, it's, it's marvellous seeing everyone out in the street like this, acknowledging such sterling work. Oh, oh. <laughs> Someone get an ambulance for that boy. Cheers. <laughs> We've had stories on the back and, and front pages. What better way to just bring them into perspective and be able to have them in the rear view mirror and have a good laugh at them than when you see them or hug Monet on only an excuse. <laughs> so I think it's a great way just to just to put a perspective on some of the stories, yeah, and, and make everybody laugh. Hello, I'm Professor Jason Leach, and I know what you're thinking. A professor from Airdrie. <laughs> but it's true. I am a professor, I am from Airdrie, and I am the cheery face of the global pandemic. So, if you have any questions, fire away. Does a global pandemic include Scotland? Good question. As Scotland is technically part of the world, then yes, it does. <laughs> is it coronavirus or COVID-19? What's the correct term? You can use both. Had it originated in Japan, it might have been called the Corolla virus. Or if a symptom was foaming at the mouth, the Cremola virus. See how the environmental folk are going on about the discarded masks in the seas and the oceans? Is that not a good thing for the fish? That's a good shout. As far as we are aware, there have been no reports of fish catching COVID-19. So the masks ending up the sea must be working. You've got to be able to push the envelope. So the 2018 FIFA World Cup, 2018 FIFA World Cup, ladies and gentlemen, will be organised in <laughs> Russia. I think the beauty of Scottish football is, uh, is a soap opera. And, and, and it, only excuse has worked particularly well within the insanity of our little world. He was the individual the teddy bears thought was going to save their club, but he ended up in court facing charges of fraud. Now to commemorate wee Craigie's acquittal and the Rangers fans being left not knowing who to blame, the Loyal Mint have produced a limited edition replica of the one pound coin White used to buy Rangers from Sir David Murray. This limited edition collector's item comes with an exact replica copy of Rangers notification of administration. <laughs> Plus, a dictionary which contains the definition of the word liquidation. <laughs> and a genuine replica Donald Finlay QC presentation pipe set. 
The Craig White limited edition one pound commemorative coin used to own, to treasure, to throw at opposition players and fans. <laughs> Look, the law lords have said it, right? Between 2001 and 2010, Rangers operated a dodgy financial system that gave them an unfair sporting advantage over everybody else, and this has to be acknowledged. Look, I am, however, a reasonable Celtic man. So, look, look, I'm not calling for title stripping or medals taken back. No, 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 no. All, all I'm saying is that we asked the risk we put against the titles in the Cups Rangers won during these years. And a wee line at the bottom of the page that says, asterisk denotes cheating bastards. <laughs> Only an excuse has paralleled some of the big, big changes of Scottish society, some of the seismic changes. <laughs> the order is often criticised for living in the past and not embracing the modern world. This is very hurtful to us, which is why this marching season, we've made some big changes. <laughs> appealing to such a broad base. Anyone who's brave enough to criticise Scottish politics right now deserves not just a medal, but a safe house. OK, Braveheart. Aye. News the day and news the hour. Doing the right thing. Yes! 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 Line. We've all seen the Prime Minister's moves at our party's annual conference. Well, not to be outdone, our own First Minister has shown she can do it too. I am Provost Donny Murdo McLeod McTrump. <laughs> Unlike my distant cousin over in the America, I refuse to concede the local council election, which I have just lost by two votes to one. <laughs> Our result for this is very, very hard to take, given that I had doubled my vote. <laughs> I should also point out that the postal vote has not been counted yet as the pigeon has got lost. <laughs> I demanded there had to be a big, big, bra recount, and for that recount to continue until I win. <laughs> so, you can rest assured, this isn't over, and that me and the First Lady won't be moving out of the White Croft. <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, four more years. <laughs> Whether it be football or latterly in the last few years, whether it's other areas uh, where where people will, will have kind of quite fixed memories about things that have gone on in that year, it's good on one hand to be reminded of them. It's also, I suppose, good on the other hand to have them kind of punctured. It's the year ahead that matters. You join me at the home of one pupil as he opens his envelope to find out his higher results. Here we go. Oh, brilliant. I, I get A's in English, Chemistry, Biology, History, Computer Science, Geography and Physics. Are you surprised? Oh, aye. Only sat my nap five in woodwork. <laughs> I suppose it helps us not take ourselves too seriously as well. New from GLM. Now the people of Scotland can feel safe and normal with Scott Coupon. Designed using the very latest developments in cloth and stitching, featuring state-of-the-art elasticated loops for comfort, safety, and hanging onto ears effectiveness. Scott Coupon includes innovations especially for the people of Scotland. The hole for a fag, the flap for a bottle, the opening for chips. Beat the virus without improving your health with Scott Coupon. Available for all good pound shops that sell cheap pish. What about the schools? Are they shutting or what? So, schools in Scotland are expected to remain opened thanks to the discovery of a new weapon in the fight against COVID-19. 
From now on, all Jannies will be armed with an extra bucket of sawdust. <laughs> See when you're in your house and you hear a thud and you look and there's a shape of a bird on your window? What is that? Ah, uh, well, a lot of people have been asking that. That's caused when your window is hit by a bird-shaped object. <laughs> Possibly a bird. One more time, could you explain the festive bubble? OK, so no big bubble, but a wee bubble is OK. Especially a tiny bubble, because tiny bubbles <laughs> in the wine makes me feel happy, makes me feel fine. <laughs> yeah, fuck! <laughs> no Spartans. See that big yo bunna head of yours? I'd love to slap it with a claw hammer. <laughs> I should have listened to Andy Gorham. I should have listened to him when he sat in that very chair and said, I'm your man. I'd watch only an excuse year after year, and so it was actually a real thrill to be asked to be part of it. But the business book of the year has to be leading. Broadly speaking, what is the main focus of your book? It's about leading and, <laughs> and, and leadership, because, you know, the principles are the same, you know, whether you're, you're leading a, a multi-million pound football club like Manchester United, or you're, you're, you're leading half the Govan Young team against the Mini Hill Fleet. <laughs> And it was almost heightened when he was doing it because he was so into it. You've done a very prestigious seminar at no less a place than Harvard in Boston. Oh, proud. Very proud. <laughs> Harvard were very proud to get hold of me. Proud, very proud. A man has to get a fox, a hen, <laughs> and a bag of grain across the river in a rowing boat. <laughs> now, instantly, you have to say to yourself, that is plainly a ridiculous way for a grown man to behave. <laughs> What's he doing with the fox anyway? These animals aren't domesticated. Oh, of course they want to see me at Harvard. Of course they would. I mean, pay good money to see me at Harvard. Why wouldn't you? It's a Mexican in a sombrero frying an egg for his breakfast. <laughs> see? It's a full picture. It's marvellous. But he just seemed to be enjoying himself so much. Finally, so Alex, who would be your ideal leader? Well, Kirsty, the, the ideal leader requires the, the philanthropy of Andrew Carnegie, the, the, the oratory of, of Martin Luther King. And the courage of Churchill? Churchill? No, I, I can't even see what a dog out of car insurance advert can do. I was interviewing Alex Ferguson. I interviewed that Alex Ferguson the way I'd interview any other Alex Ferguson. You made no mistake. I'm up there with the most successful business gurus of recent times. I'm my Gates, I'm my Jobs, I'm my Branson. You're a sugar. Thank you very much, Kirsty. <laughs> you sweet out yourself. Sir Alex, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Stevie Connell, and you're watching STV Rutherglen. For all your Connells, Come to Connell's Connell's Direct for all your Connell requirements. Need Connell's Day? Come to Connell's Connell's Direct for all your Connell requirements. Use our white and Sonnels? Come to Connell's Sonnels Direct for all your Sonnel requirements. And internet shoppers, gouge in your couch, tap your phone and bolt by one click for Connell's 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 and Sonnels via Connell's 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 and Sonnels Direct online. I think when you consider how much Jonathan Watson has done with football and with the people who work in and around football over the years, um, it was almost kind of no surprise that he would be as good as he is when doing the impersonations of people from television shows like Neil Oliver and The History of Scotland, which is, which is really, really good. Scotland is awash with Scottish history, and it's a history that must be told again and again and again by walking upstairs, wearing cargo breeks, kicking through holes, looking over my shoulder, and posing like a haddie. I love the branching out into, you know, taking the mickey out of the media, to broaden that out into all these kind of Scottish dramas that were, they were worship, you know, and the kind of Scottish hard man. Tough town. 
the story of a man who's been away, but comes back. He was away, and now he's back. And then, in an unexpected twist... Lets me away again. <laughs> I don't come back. <laughs> tough town. Welcome to a town that's tough to leave. I'm back. <laughs> You know, and these wild dramas shot like Shetland. It's just so delightful <laughs> to see those stereotypes being smashed down. And now we smile, you're full of no one. A repair shop, where much-loved broken treasures are brought back to life by a dream team of the most skilled craftsmen and women. But this is no ordinary <laughs> repair shop. This is the Scottish <laughs> repair shop. So this guy comes in with a plug. He says, see this plug? I says, aye. He says, I wonder if you could restore the widescreen telly that used to be attached to it. Mm. Did you make it right? Just, just a bloody chance <laughs> Sorry, doll, can I be asked? <laughs> My parents were given this as a wedding present about 60 years ago, and as they're now no longer with us, it's the only item that myself and my family have to remind us of them. You're in luck, Ken. There you go! Get his <laughs> Talk about ungrateful. <laughs> Okay, Peloton, let's do this. Lee in Manchester, you're amazing. Chris in Southampton, you're stronger than you think, buddy. Andy in Falkirk, your bollocks have slipped out the side of your shorts, mate. So, who wins the Strictly Come Dancing ultimate Glitter Ball Trophy for Dance of the Year? By popular demand, in first place is this. <laughs> Under 30 votes, you saw the problem. We were losing too many games, and one of the reasons we were losing too many games was because we were playing too many games. So, by not making the World Cup Finals, that's three matches we've managed to avoid defeating. <laughs> it's an achievement in itself. <laughs> Sometimes good to get the Mackey taken out your wee bit. You're taking over the Scotland job, and what I'm sure the fans are dying to know is plenty of money in the transfer budget to bring in new players. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, particularly at the present moment, you know, we're hoping to sign Zidane, Ronaldinho and Shevchenko. Really? No. <laughs> Great stuff. You had a wee phrase that's obviously... Well, obviously. Particularly. Particularly. And at the present moment. At the present moment. Uh, I think you'll find that, that after um, Jonathan picked that up, I tried really hard to stop it. But obviously I've not been able to do it. Well, obviously. It might be the way he says one word. Obviously, you know. But you know that you spent time getting that one word right. And I think that's why footballers and fans and managers love it so much, because he's just not taking a pot shot, he's studying that person. Obviously. If, if you don't find it funny, there's something the matter with you. Hey, 
World Cup souvenirs. Air of Scotland souvenirs now. Air official World Cup Scotland salute. <laughs> you know, I love going to see Scotland games. I really want them to do well, and I've supported them, as they say, through thin and thin. So back to the World Cup, and uh, I saw uh, Craig Brown uh, very recently, actually, and I said to him, Craig, you're, you're going to France then? He said, yes, to lose. I said, yes, I expect you will. <laughs> <laughs> They've beaten us. Terrific, you know. But we beat them first. Terrific. You know, I still think there's a lot of work to be done, you know, between now and when we win the tournament next year. Uh, you're more, Kev. <laughs> that's the stuff of humour. It's the stuff that's perfect for satire as well. Can't decide where to go? Choose the ultimate staycation with Strachan holidays. No booking fee, cos you're no going anywhere. Where'll day me? Hamel day me. Every time, with Strachan holidays. <laughs> I think that that's only an excuse's greatest achievement is it's helped Scottish football fans to blunder through failure. <laughs> and Craig Brown sent to the stand after remonstrating with the fourth official. And if I know the Scotland boss, he'll not be happy with this situation. when we come together as a country. Politically, we can be split. You know, there's different fractions that go on when it comes to our national team. <laughs> we all just want them to win, and those moments are really special. I'm proud of the boys. I'm really pleased for Stevie Clark because he's, he's my, he was my teammate, you know? He learned everything off me. You know, I taught him everything. So <laughs> Discipline and all that, you know, it's well done, Stevie. <laughs> proud, you know? Very proud to see Scotland qualify for the Euros. It's a tremendous accomplishment, you know, and really puts things in perspective, you know. It just shows what you can achieve via a backdoor also ran second chance playoff penalty shooter, you know. For once, we have something to be really excited and happy about with Scottish football. I know one thing for sure, and I'll be down there on a Friday night in the England game, uh, and I think everyone I speak to will be there. Scotland can win the Euros. Scotland boy Stevie Clark, for the first time in 22 years, Scotland have qualified for a major finals. An occasion of great joy and untold happiness for the nation. It's true, but uh, I won't be getting carried away. <laughs> I think there's a more kind of unifying and loved show as only an excuse. They recognise the characters, they love the humour. I don't think it'll ever age. So, you know, in 10,000 year time when they're finding the only an excuse hoard buried a mile underground, they'll take it out and go, oh my goodness, is this what it was like? How exciting was that? How funny was that? I need a certain...